in front of more than 10,000 fans at the barn. The eighth-ranked Huskies looking to build momentum defensively, take on a Minnesota Golden Gopher squad eager to showcase a new era on their home court. Welcome inside Williams Arena in Minneapolis. Sloan Martin, Christy Winter, Scott, along with you. So excited for this early season matchup. And we look immediately at Paige Becker. She grew up watching these Golden Gophers, the Minnesota Lynx, envisioning herself as those players, and she comes back to compete. What I love most about what you just said is that now it's coming tenfold back at her with little eyes upon her in this building where she won a state title. It's just really beautiful to watch this unfold. But look at what Paige Beckers was able to do in high school. Three times she was named high school player of the year at Hopkins High School. Won a state title in 2019. But it's the nine assist for me, Sloan. She is a team player. You can talk about her gaudy points. 21 and five steals, but those nine assists, that's what she brings to the table for UConn. This is a homecoming, not just for Paige, the entire Twin Cities community, including her former teammate. A lot of emotion on the line here in Minneapolis. Williams Arena is packed here to see number eight Connecticut taking on Minnesota, a team with a new head coach entering a new era while the Huskies building momentum even with a couple injuries in their lineup as we look at our starting lineups for UConn no AZ Fudd out with a knee injury right now but stepping in for her is Aubrey Griffin and Aubrey Griffin is coming off of a stellar performance against Maryland where she had four block shots and added 13 rebounds to her stat line but all of it was much needed and she was tremendously consistent and the keys for UConn in this game will be to trap and rotate and really be disruptive on the defensive end and carry over that great energy from the Maryland game where they were able to get stops and scores in transition. And for Minnesota, defensive transition. They're going to have to get back, but to do that, you have to stay poised on the offensive side and preserve possessions and not give UConn easy runouts from their stops. UConn coming off a 80 to 48 win over a ranked team number 20, Maryland. Minnesota knows what they're in for in this matchup. Man-to-man -man defense, it looks like, here to start for Minnesota. And Mara Braun getting the assignment on Paige Beckers. They faced off many times in high school, Hopkins High School, and Wyzetta Braun never beat the Hopkins Royals when she was in high school. Well, they played together for two seasons, won a state title together in 2019. Paige Beckers gets the first look. That goes out of bounds. It will be Minnesota basketball. Well, we'll see if UConn applies any pressure. They're springing one up for soft coverage with Paige Beckers. And that's something Minnesota was preparing for, yes. to feel a lot of pressure. UConn wanting to force Minnesota into early turnovers. Well, you just don't know when it's going to happen, right? The rules, maybe it's after a made free throw. Maybe it's after a made bucket where you're going to see that pressure full court. Paige Beckers guarding who she calls her sister, Amaya Battle, a jump ball. And possession arrow will keep it right here. There's nothing like playing one of your best friends, though. I will say that. And you'll be best friends before the game and after the game. <laughs> but during the game, it's fierce fire and competitiveness from beginning to end. These are players who used to share pregame meals together, spaghetti made by Amaya's mom. And she says, we're going to be enemies for a little while. After that, we'll go back. There you go. Mara Braun, nice step back, but left short. And Groholski, the freshman, gets it right back to Braun, feeling the energy. And it will be Paige Becker. She is dangerous in transition. Battle already picking her up. Now, UConn loves to push pace after their stops, even after made buckets. Aaliyah Edwards, too strong, but she travels. Yeah, it looked like she lost her footing. You see what she was trying to do and get to the opposite side there and avoid that second line of defense that was very good. Trying to take it away. Here's Edwards putting it on the deck. And then there's the extra step. One, two, three. Sophie Hart, another Minnesota native, a transfer from NC State, standing her ground on that play. And solid discipline on the defensive end, and that's what Gino Arima told us that he was expecting from this Minnesota ball club. Raholski, she's got a great shot. That time misfires, and we're still scoreless here at the barn. 
Good recovery defensively by, Min by Minnesota there in the turnover. Edwards not quite ready for that pass. And Becker's the kind of player she grew up loving players like Rachel Bantam, yes. Lindsey Whelan, even Chelsea Gray, who she saw in the WNBA Finals in this building. Yes. We always have to be ready. Yes, and Paige Becker, she told us that after practice today. She said, you know, I sat there and I just wondered what this building would feel like full of fans with me actually playing, and now here it is. Battle stopped from getting into the lane, being guarded by Griffin. Tend to shoot for Minnesota. Bronze got to go to work, flies to the rim, can't get the touch. And a travel is called on the rebound. Well, what UConn is doing defensively, it looks almost like a matchup zone. And they're shifting and bumping off. First year head coach Dawn Plitzewite went to a Sweet 16 with South Dakota. She's gone to the NCAA tournament four straight seasons. And Coach Oriema said, Good things happen wherever she goes. She has disciplined teams. Yes, and it's been on the defensive end. And you see all the teams that she has coached, they've been in the top three offensively and defensively. There's the first bucket of the game. Mallory Heyer stroking it from three. Mallory Heyer. Coach Blitzewhite said, hey, we want her to stay deliberate. We want her to have some intentionality with her offensive attack. And that was good that she got that first bucket for the squad. Rather a long two for Heyer as she extends her game is practicing with the guards that shoot around today. 10 on the clock for Edwards. What a spin, what a finish. Yeah, you gotta bring early attention to her, maybe with a double team, because her footwork is immaculate when she gets the ball and the block down in there. Battle looks for higher. She gets the edge on the baseline and finishes in the reverse. What you want to do against that kind of defense, that matchup zone, get behind that last line of defense where the help can't get there to recover and contest. What a play by Paige Beckers and one. Uh, Paige Beckers is very familiar with this court. And Aaliyah Edwards got that pass downstairs to her right underneath the defense. And she puts her little jacket on. <laughs> I tell you that it's a little chilly here. And that's a tough spin cycle move inside by Edwards on the previous possession for UConn. And the paint is going to be an area that Minnesota cannot afford to give up too many buckets at. A strong finish for Paige Beckers, who when she arrived had trouble benching an empty barbell, which is 45 pounds. She worked so hard in her rehab recovery to put on muscle. I thought that was just me that couldn't lift the bar as a freshman <laughs> because that thing was crooked. That left arm was low, Sloan. You keep the collars off so you can dump the weight <laughs> yeah, off the case. Not, it was not a good deal. <laughs> it's Sophie Hart going to work, and she perfectly kisses it off Lex. Nice body control inside, and that's what you want to do. Stay connected to the defender and keep that window open to get to that baseline bucket. See a lot of backdoor cuts by Connecticut. That time, Braun staying with Paige. And getting the steal in the exact right spot. Yeah, Braun was right there on the high side, staying loose, and that's the key to interior defense. You don't want to give that body contact up. Mara Braun leaves that way short. She's still trying to find her shot right now. She's 0 for 5 to start. We'll take a look inside. You see what Minnesota is trying to do. They lift the defense and then spin on them. Keep the body contact slow. So now that door is open on that baseline side. There's no help within an ear shot or an eye shot. Nehemiah Holloway entering the game. KK Arnold. A freshman from Wisconsin, so a little bit of a homecoming for her, too. Well, I love these young players for UConn, and they really had solid performances in their win in their last contest against Maryland. They played with no fear, and Gino said, I'll take that 10 times out of 10 from his youngsters. Nika Mule to Edwards at the high post. That's long, good effort by Griffin, but snatched up by Nehemiah Holloway. Well, Griffin was trying to pursue that second chance opportunity, but she was checked off, and that's what Minnesota needs to do, maintain that contact on the glass. Braun drawing a lot of attention. Groholski hand in her face. That's way short and ripped away by Edwards. Well, Minnesota's getting some good looks from the outside, but they can also put it on the deck and get 10 toes down in the paint and then get some paint threes. 
Another ball through the hands of Edwards. Not able to corral it. And a turnover for Connecticut. A one-point lead by Minnesota. Close to start here at the bar. Well, Amaya Battle was the first person that Paige Becker called when they saw that this game was scheduled between the Gophers and the Connecticut Huskies. Paige says, that's my little sister. They're two years apart. They both play point guard. And Amaya says that she really took me under her own wing. I used to shy away from going to the ball. She put it in my hands, and that instilled confidence in me. Absolutely. She said, Paige told me, you can do this. We need for you to play that role for us. And she said, I'm going to do it and just embrace that role for the team and got a ring for it too. Got a state championship on this floor in 2019, maybe could have been 2020 before the tournament was canceled. Clean look for higher, can't knock down the three. And the ball goes into the Connecticut bench. Meanwhile, Chris, the UConn's offense trying to find its flow, just two for four but five turnovers to start. Yeah, and Minnesota, they've only been able to score two points off of those. Minnesota right now hasn't made any of their threes, even though they come into this game shooting 34% from range, but haven't been able to pay off those turnovers. Edwards upset at herself, missing that layup and then picking up a foul. Yeah, that's a frustration situation there, but here's some full court pressure, man to man, but all you do is get the ball in, clear everybody else out to clear the traffic so you can navigate and survey. Coach Oriema said KK Arnold is someone who gets after it defensively, and she gets the assignment on the point guard battle. Yeah, you don't have to tell her to lock down and play some tough defense, sit in a stance and move her feet, have active hands in the gaps and in the passing lanes. She's on it. Time running out for Braun against another great defender. She is in trouble, will have to heave, and that has no chance, a turnover for the Gophers. Oh, that was just fantastic defense by UConn, pushing Minnesota further and further away from any viable scoring areas. And that's what they were working on today. That's why that was one of the keys, right, to trap and rotate. A lot of coaches call that ice when you bring a second body up. So it's two on the ball, two people, one pass away, and somebody in the line in the back as a safety. Now, Paige said, Defense can't be conditional. It can't be just because we lost. We have to have that edge all the time. A great example on that possession. Difficult shot by Beckers. And Mallory Hires got it from Minnesota. Going back to what you were saying about Paige, I mean, against NC State, their first game of the year, which was a loss. They scored 82 points, but it wasn't enough. Beckers saving the day from behind, blocking the six foot five heart. Well, this is what Paige Beckers does well. Great anticipation from behind, getting all ball on the block. You don't even know she's coming, but I tell you what, you feel her presence when that ball gets swatted out of bounds. Defense needs to be synonymous with Paige Beckers as much as scoring, passing, and, and being a good teammate. Well, you saw her high school numbers where she averaged five steals a game, so she's not new to it. She's true to it. Barbara misfires once more. And the ball going back to UConn. Minnesota 0 for 7 from 3. Gino Oriyama, the Hall of Fame head coach in his 38th season. First time coaching here, though. Did you have a chance to ask him? It looks like he's going with the stool next to him. Sometimes that can be a little awkward for coaches. First time in on the race floor. Uh, no doubt, but 11 championships for Gino Oriyama here at UConn. Started his coaching career on the collegiate level. UVA with Debbie Ryan who was the head coach there and he said for those four years I believe it was 81 to 85 he said those were the most formative years of my coaching career and it changed the trajectory of his understanding of the game and and boy what he has been able to do since 1985 on the sidelines here has been tremendous Mule dumps it into Edwards and she coughs it up Minnesota bringing the pressure in the interior. Braun finds a lane, no whistle there. Still being aggressive and now Beckers will push. Up ahead to Arnold, beautiful transition basketball. Well, there's that rim run, attacking the bucket 
after a stop. Now, when you're down here for your Minnesota and you can get your two hands on the basketball on the offensive glass, you've got to get your elbows up because that's a crowd down there that is trying to get that basketball away from you. So you better be strong with the ball. You have great positioning. Now come down with the ball and the possession. Five on the clock for Braun for three. And it is still not falling for last year's leading score for this team in all Big Ten. Freshman last year. That's locked away. Excellent interior defense. It stays here with Minnesota. UConn staying strong. And look how far out Minnesota has to start their offense up again. Rolski gets herself free, launches the three, and UConn can finally take back possession. There's got to be a way for Minnesota to try to get downhill. Those threes are not falling. You don't want to continue with those. Battle whistled for the foul. There's Paige falling away on that check. Well, it's been defense to offense for the UConn Huskies. Paige Becker is on the move, on her horses, pushing it ahead to Arnold as she was able to finish in transition. And that's what UConn loves to do. They love to get it and go. And KK Arnold, I mean, she is so speedy. And she possesses the fire in the belly as well. Only a freshman. And I said earlier, Gina Arama says you can get one or the other from freshmen. Either they hold back and they're afraid to make a mistake, or they go all out and make the mistake anyway. And like either way, you've got to trust your instincts and go for it. That's exactly right. He said, I want her to play like there's an unlimited amount of mistakes she can make. There you go because I can't coach every little thing if you're afraid to make mistakes. Yeah, you gotta play full on. I mean, this is coloring outside of the line season if you're a freshman. And we've seen some outstanding freshmen across the board in women's basketball and here, the gates. Here comes another one entering in the game. Ashlyn Shade coming off a 10-point output against a ranked Maryland team. She was solid in that game, made the open shots, made the extra passes as well, but Again, no fear in that freshman either. Minnesota shooting three for 18. They have missed 10 straight. Long two for Braun. And she is still held scoreless. 0 for 10 to start. She is someone who you want to keep shooting, right? but still settling it. Right, and Minnesota is 0 for 9 from three. So now let's get downhill and test the second and third levels instead of just the threes at this juncture. Ice Brady entering the game for the first time for Connecticut. Here is higher for three. She drains it. That's the first today. Or you can make your threes. Like you, can, <laughs> you can get downhill or you can pull them. But that was a timely one because it was an extra pass. The defense rotated too slow to get up and get a hand in the shooting pocket. Higher's got seven of Minnesota's nine. Brady from the high post. She loves the mid-range. And I love her name. <laughs> Ice Brady, who we with that lefty, the gooseneck for emphasis right there at the nail. Solid. She has a great motor as well. And she gets all over the glass. You're gonna see her get to the offensive boards for UConn as well to preserve their possessions on the other side. There's that jump. Quick pass outside, Graholski, and ripped down by Arnold, looking like a post. Keeping her eyes up, pushing the ball, Shade can't put it in at the buzzer. It is low scoring, but close here at the barn. UConn leading 11-9 to after the first quarter. Paige what? Beckers, a huge greeting from the Twin Cities community. Offense, defense, she's doing it all for the Huskies to start. When this top 10 ranked sophomore recruiting class from Minnesota decided to come here, stay through a coaching change, this is how they wanted to see the bar. They know everyone's excited to see Paige Beckers, but we just want to get people in the building. We want people to see us and this new program under their first year head coach, Dom Flipsawhite, who has had tremendous success in her career. Second year at the Power Five level. Spent one year at West Virginia, but did take them to the tournament. But really, it's her connection to South Dakota and this entire region. She grew up on a farm in Wisconsin that made her really want to stay here in Minnesota. 
Edwards taking it to the hole. Yeah, and, and Blitz White, she has been fantastic. I had her when she was in South Dakota during the NCAA tournament, and her team was just like this, feisty, played hard, great defenders. Shooting blows continue for Minnesota, one for 12 from three, under 20%. Mm -hmm. You have to credit UConn's defense for that, but wow, for them to take 22 shots right now, they're four for 22 overall. And then UConn, on the other hand, they're five for 10. So they haven't even had the attempts that Minnesota has had. So I think Coach Blitzwhite has to like that they have more opportunities and possessions. They just have to get some shots to fall. Braun still scoreless. Has not found the bottom of the net just yet. Leah Edwards mid-range two off the front of the iron. And Braun's got it. Looked like some zone there by Minnesota. We'll check it on the next possession. Because there's only two passes out of it. You didn't see a cutter go through. But it looked like a zone. In the post, it is battle against Shave. She finds herself in traffic, dishing it off to Hart. She'll put up the mid-range, too. See, I would have liked to see her put the ball on the deck. And then put her back to the basket, and it get to the rim. KK Arnold right at the rim. Edwards can't finish either. And UConn also having a tough time score. Raholski looking for her to drop some in. Still not happening for the Gophers from three. Coach puts I just turn and walk the other way on that one. It's like we, we, we're getting good looks. We just can't find the bottom of the net just yet. UConn also hasn't made a three. They're just 0 for 2, though. Graholski clearly with the green lights. And she's got it. There it is. And that's what you want to see. Amnesia. If you missed that shot prior to, you don't want to shy away from getting the next one down. It's next play. Keep stacking plays. Graholski, a top 100 recruit, the first to sign with Plitzelweit here in Minnesota. Minnesota also doing a great job on the defensive glass as well. Trailing UConn in that regard, but limiting those offensive putback opportunities. Graholski had just missed a three-point shot on the previous possession, but here's a transition three. UConn's defense filtering into the paint, and that allows for the spacing and timing and great rhythm for that triple to fall. And if Minnesota can get some of those transition threes where they don't really have to contend late into the shot clock and get those shots down, Sloan, that's what they need. Battle finds Groholski coming off of her first bucket, knocked away by Shade. Big point of emphasis at shoot around today, that defensive on ball pressure. Absolutely. Groholski tied up by Beckers. And the possession arrow will keep it right here. Well, this is what Gino Ariema was talking about. Taking away gaps and rotating. You see the swarm of Yukon Huskies right there to the ball. Like a bee to honey. And that's what you want. You want to close down the gaps, especially right there at the elbows and at the nail. Allowing 92 points to NC State's really lit a fire under this team. Absolutely, and they watched film prior to the Maryland game for almost two hours. Graholski, back-to-back threes for her. Trying to keep up this offensive momentum, a 6-0 run via her shot. And sometimes you just need to see one fall. Uh, here comes the basketball our way. I always trust you, Christy. Hi, I got some good mitts over here. I have great <laughs> hands. But look at this triple. That's all net up top. Now Minnesota finding a groove. And they have the lead right now because they have high volume opportunities with their shooting. And you see UConn, they don't have as many shots that they've taken. And now that these shots are falling for Minnesota, UConn needs to stay on their toes. Nearly doubling the Huskies in attempts. And nine to two in offensive rebounds for those extra possessions. An offensive foul yep. called. Stepping in is Ayana Johnson, a freshman from Wisconsin. Another freshman, Ayana Johnson, 
She gets her body squared to the ball handler and takes one right at the collarbone for the team. That's a charge going the other way. Full established defensive position there by the youngster. You love to see that. Actually, a player blocking that. It's Janae Sanders stepping in, one of the most experienced members of this team. Sanders in trouble in the paint, floats it up in her first action in this game. Becker's looking for Edwards, and she finds the backboard for two. And this zone is spread out because of the way UConn plays offense, and now there's individual coverage down inside. And you've got to disallow a touch and stay loose on Edwards and get to the high side of her and get some deflections. Sanders loses it. Beckers goes all the way for an easy two, something this UConn offense yeah. needs. Absolutely, the steal and score mentality is in full effect for UConn. And that's something Gino said he wanted UConn to carry over. He said, we want that defensive energy and get back to who we are on that side of the court. Sanders, first season at the Power Five level. There draws a foul on Beckers, taking a bump. Well, here's Paige Beckers, who at 6-1 can survey and see over top of defenders on the perimeter, and Edwards just stifling with her play down in the trenches. Nice smooch off the window to get that one to fall. to the rim and a whistle and shooting two is higher a nice hard cut on that out of bounds under play and sometimes it's just that simple usually you think you have to set a couple of screens to get your teammates free but if you just take a hard dash to the ball like higher did you can get a great touch second personal on Ducharme another member of the team they're looking to get going for this season, 4.3 points per game, shooting about 30%. Yeah, she can stick it from the outside, another floor spacer, especially in the absence of AZ Fudd, who is still continuing to be reevaluated with that right knee injury that she suffered in practice prior to the Maryland game. It happened on Tuesday. She'll be getting an MRI soon once that swelling goes down. Beckers off one foot, beautiful. Oh, that float game by Paige Beckers in her homecoming game here in Minnesota. Just sweet. She's got at least a hundred family, friends in attendance. She said, yeah, there's a lot of distant relatives. Great, great, great. Second, third, once removed. They're all here in the building wearing Husky Blue. And her high school teammate just missed that shot on the other side. Beckers lining it up from three. Minnesota again controlling the glass on the defensive end. Edwards slow to get back. Griffin coming in and taking it away. The touchdown pass and the score by Duchamp. And that's what UConn will do to you. They were just down 16-15 and now they've made a surge with their stop and score ability. Becker showing off her arm on that throw. Yeah. Higher, straight on from three. That bounces out. Minnesota continues to be cold. Three for 16 from beyond the arc. Back door, the connection not there. Great effort by Braun keeping that in play. Higher, one person to beat and can't get it off glass. And this looked like her footwork was out of rhythm there before she attempted to take that shot. Thought she was gonna pass that off to the weak side because she looked out of control and off balance. High ball screen here by Edwards. They love this two-man game. Beckers takes a tumble and travels. Well, Paige Beckers is back home in Minneapolis and then right here she's gonna get that Dribble handoff and then the float, float on situation right there trickles through the nets. And then I know the Vikings play later, but this pass was pretty tough. A great connection there for the Huskies. Red
Redshirt junior guard from Hopkins, Arizona, number five, Paige Becker. Senior guard from Zagreb, Croatia, number 10, Nika Mule. The crowd loving seeing Paige Beckers announced here, her first time playing in this building since she was in high school. This is where the state tournament is held, and she has a huge cheering section behind the UConn bench. You can see her mother, Amy, her father, Bob, her little brother, Drew, right there on the right of your screen as we zoom in on her parents, and they have been nothing but supportive, even Bob Beckers. Maya telling us that he was even involved with that Hopkins team. He was helping me out too, is what she told us. Right, yeah, and that's that's what it is. It's about community when it comes to high school hoops, and you love to hear that and see that support continuing on the collegiate level as well. Hard pressure from Mika Mule. She is a pest in the best possible way. Opens up broad for three, her first bucket. That's what I'm talking about, penetrate. Get a great pass after you commit defense to the basketball and the dribble drive. Minnesota had its largest deficit of five, now one possession. Beckers rising, hitting. Over three defenders, that was just too cold. Paige Beckers is fearless when it comes to seeking out her sweet spots on the floor, which is everywhere. And there's no shot that she cannot no. finish. And she knows that. Ron, hard defense from Griffin. Tend to shoot from Minnesota. Hart working hard in the post. Instead, Braun with this step back. Can't go back to back. And a whistle. Timeout called by Gino Oriema. 23 to 19 is the UConn lead. As the Huskies will huddle up in this timeout. Now leading by four. Amaya battle. Look at these handles right here. Eyes up though, right? But she still has great body control. A little, ooh, get over that screen. Not going that way. Rejects it. Comes back to the ball. Finds Braun in the corner, who hits a string music triple from the corner. And then, hey, not to be outdone. Since Battle and Beckers were a high school teammate, she was like, my turn on the other side for this rise and fire mini. That was sweet as honey. She is on it. And this game is going to unfold this way. And that's what Gino Ariema said. Hey, our offense was sputtering in the first quarter against Maryland. But in that okay. second quarter, we had 28 points. And we had good flow in the open court, which they do here today as well. But that quarter court, we got to be better. Beckers can't get it to fall. And again, Minnesota controlling the defensive glass. The trailer higher, Groholski. Beckers looking to take command in this second quarter. Putting up her shot, she's got 11 points, four for nine shooting. But I like how Paige set herself up for that last shot. Groholski finding her groove, she's got eight. She has been solid, 42% coming into this game from the floor for her. Right near her season average, too, uh, as Mule gets that to drop for him. Well, Nika Mule and Paige Beckers have been trying to read and react off of one another in that NC State game. Nika Mule didn't get a lot of touches, and Paige Beckers was very ball dominant, and not in a negative way, but against Maryland, they tried to Rearrange that. Beckers off one foot, and she'll be shooting two. As she gets up to her feet. Grace Grahulski has been lighting it up for Minnesota. The defense gets stuck on the screen, and then no one comes up to close that gap. You see drop coverage, then you drop a bucket. And right there, that little high hand holding that follow through was just what the doctor ordered. If you see drop coverage, you drop a bucket. Yeah, that's a hashtag. <laughs> yes. Drop a bucket. Let's see drop coverage. It's disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. Shoot the, shoot the ball, right? Paige Beckers misses her first. She's the leading scorer in this game so far. Let's go along with her five rebounds as well, three assists. 
Martin Sedano entering the game for the first time for Minnesota. Looking to keep this within a couple possessions. The largest lead has just been two, but they have kept it close with the number eight team in the country. A little double stagger action here offensively by Minnesota, trying to get something to the rim, but they're catching so far outside of the three-point line, and now they're under 10 again on the shot clock. Maya Battle trying to get free the up and under. That is tough, and she finishes. Oh, yes, ma'am. Battle, battle that one out. And got that up and under, the counter move to the counter move, nicely executed. They want her to be more of an offensive threat to open up those passing lanes. And a foul called on that lob inside to Edwards. Amaya Battle right here. She's gonna try to make a read. Defense is swarming. Arnold is right there, but then that step through and then still on a contested shot was able to get that one to go. Degree of difficulty on a thousand, but she told us today after practice, hey, when I get into that logo area, that's when I make great decisions, whether I'm passing or scoring the ball. Edwards tied up in trouble. Cutting through is Arnold. Beautiful timing. But it will go back to Minnesota. Well, Dawn puts it wide. She told us, hey, we're 3-0 oh right now because we've been playing our pants off. I'm going to say that. <laughs> she told her. But she said, hey, we're playing hard. And that makes up for a lot of things, right? When you just go hard and almost what we were talking about with Gino Ariema, just infusing his team with confidence and just just go all out. Color outside the lines is what we like to say, but it's, it's that kind of fearlessness that has Minnesota within one possession here. Graholski. Not there that time. Holloway skying for that board. Knew the time, but it does not fall. An excellently executed first half by Minnesota has them within three against the number eight team in the country. Yeah, feisty, fiery defense has Minnesota right there. And they have won the possession battle against UConn, but they just haven't shot the ball particularly well so far. But maybe that'll change after halftime. Plenty more coming your way here from Minneapolis. It is a tight one here at the barn. UConn leading 26 to 23 in Paige Becker's homecoming game. But it is the Gophers who want to crash this party. Looking good so far. A low scoring first half. Paige Becker's in her homecoming here in Minneapolis. Beautiful finish. She has a game high 12 points to lead the Huskies. Welcome inside the barn. Sloan Martin, Win Christy Winter, Scott, along with you. We've got a close one here between yes. the number eight team in the country and the unranked Gophers, who, despite shooting 24%, are within three. It's because they have won the possession battle. They have taken 38 shots. UConn, they've only taken 25 Sloan, so maybe UConn has shot the ball better, but Minnesota, they've had more cracks at it. If you look at what they've been able to do in the paint, UConn has won that battle 20 to six in that area, but if shots start falling for Minnesota, UConn needs to be leery of that. UConn also getting out-rebounded in this game, but we are watching Paige Beckers. They're throwing the touchdown pass to Caroline Ducharme. She's picking up her game in the second quarter, took six shots, and she's involved in every part of this offense. Absolutely. When you look at the last game for UConn against Maryland, they scored 28 points alone in the second quarter. This game, only 15 points in that second quarter, so they've got to do a better job in the quarter quarter to get their offense in a better flow. UConn has not been depending on the three-point shot. Just three attempts for them. But you look at turnovers, I think another big reason why Minnesota's been able to keep this close. Right, and both teams, they've only scored five points off of their respected turnovers that they have forced. But UConn needs to take good care of the basketball as well. You see them trying to get the spacing, but when you're missing an AZ Fudd who spaces the floor, it changes things. Nika Mule starts off with a miss. But well, we will see how both these teams respond. Mara Braun had a tough go in the first half shooting, but Hart in traffic tries to keep it alive. It will be a jump ball possession arrow keeping it right here. Well, earlier in the game, 
Minnesota was crashing the offensive boards, all right, but they were coughing that kind of possession up in a crowd. But that time you saw Hart corral it and keep it. They have the possession here. Raholski, a couple threes in that first half. Double stagger off of that inbounds play for Braun. Five on the clock for battle. The mid-range not there. Higher, a great rebounder in the Big Ten last season. Can't lasso it in. They're attacking that glass with some force. Out rebounding the Huskies offensively and defensively as well. Great look for Ducharme, and she'll be shooting too. Nice action there by UConn. That float pass to the weak side. Ducharme taking a nice purposeful cut down the lane line to get that touch. That's going to be the second on Graholski. Who's taken nearly as many shots as Laura Braun. That's what I like to say. Like when you're in the airport and you see somebody running, you pay attention to that person, right? So, <laughs> I mean, she took that hard cut. Hey. You got to be on your horse to get to her and deflect it before you're out of position trying to contest. Coach Blitzaway talked to us about staying in balance defensively in your stance, especially for this team always cutting back door. Right, and you have to have your head on the swivel. She said that's what UConn does. They lull you to sleep and then they dash back door on you, and that's why they got to the line on that last possession. Amaya Battle calling her own number. She retooled completely her shot this summer. Started with 504 shots a day. She knew that had to be better in her game. Absolutely, and she said she's been playing one-on-one -on -one with Rachel Bannon. I mean, <laughs> you get afforded to play with a WNBA player day in and day out and also work on your form with someone who has that kind of wisdom and experience as well. One of the great scorers, one of the great players in Big Ten history, Rachel Bannon on this staff helping her through that process. Leah Edwards, long range too, she's got. She can knock those down, she can spread the floor, and that's what Paige Becker said in the absence of AZ Fudd. That's 10 or 20 more shot opportunities for everyone else. So we have to stay aggressive. And you like Edwards pulling that one from range as well. Battle. Not there that time. Going back to the Huskies. To the two-man game here by UConn. Switch defensively, but then no help. Edwards just flying in. That's what we expected to see her use her speed in this matchup, especially from the high post. Yeah, get downhill, rip, and attack. Edwards up to 10 points. Second player in double figures in this game. They both play for Connecticut. There's that ice action, that double team by UConn. For a whole scheme. Can't find it. Becker's up ahead again. Ducharme can't finish it off glass. She took it to the opposite side and didn't have the lift to get it to the glass. UConn still shooting above 40%. Graholski finds her defender asleep, puts it up. Can't make her pay. The pull up by Mule looks good. A lot of different initiators for UConn. You get a steal or a board, anybody can take it up the floor. And that time, nobody stopped her. So you got to stop ball and direct it. Six nothing run for UConn, and their largest lead of the game is a timeout is called. Well, sometimes you don't need to set up a play. You're surveying, you see you have numbers, and the defense is retreating. You retreat, and I eat. Just held on to win in College Park, Maryland against the Terps yesterday. So football is coming down to it. A lot of intrigue yes. on the field. UConn setting a record, the most consecutive weeks ranked. Let me bring this up, Christy, because this feels like this moment that happens in every UConn game where they decide we're pulling away now. Right. How can they execute down the stretch? And how can Minnesota also make sure that they keep this within reaching distance? Well, I just touched my, my finger to my tongue and put my finger in the air to see what the momentum <laughs> was. And you're right. It feels like the momentum is swinging. The pendulum is swinging towards UConn because they've been able to get the stops and the fast break buckets right now. It's a 9-3 to three advantage in fast breaks. And here's another steal. 
Minnesota had five turnovers in the first half. One right there. This is a big moment for these Gophers. Edwards working hard in the paint. Can't get it off glass. And UConn goes back on defense. So single coverage down there on Edwards. She just faded away out of that shot. If she goes straight into the defender, that may be a, a viable opportunity for her to finish. Five for ten this game. She's got ten points. Battle against her former high school teammate Paige Beckers. Shot put up by Hart and left short. We see Amaya Battle didn't take that shot. I thought she had the momentum and the position advantage there. Offensive foul called by Edwards. And remember, Christy, we're not looking at that restricted area anymore. It is strictly around the circle. We're not looking at anybody not where their heels are anymore, but that time a deep post up in an offensive foul. Absolutely, and you can lean right, left, and backwards. You just cannot lean forward as a defender, and that was perfectly executed defense by Minnesota drawing that charge. Aliyah Edwards has two. Looking for a two-man game here. And they get how UConn reads it. Originally got the switch. Five to shoot for Minnesota. Graholski finds higher. And it won't go. Minnesota shooting their 20%. Coming into this game, we said in the first half, they're shooting 34% in their first three games of the season from range. Nika Mule off targets, and Minnesota continues to limit any second chance opportunities. Well, Minnesota is sitting right there. They just have to finish. Hearts looking for higher, just mistimed. Otherwise, that could have been an easy two. 33 to 25 is the Minnesota deficit right now. We'll step aside. Back here at the barn, it's pretty recognizable names in women's college basketball in the WNBA as well, including Rachel Bannon, one of the best scorers in women's college basketball history. And she continues her role on the Gopher sideline with the new rule changes this year. She was able to elevate to assistant coach, but over 3,000 career points, the 2016 Big Ten Player of the Year, and for a couple of years held that all-time record for single game scoring. And you saw that game, yes. the 60 points I against was, Northwestern. I was on that one. Ariel Powers from Michigan State had 42 in that one, so my neck was certainly sore <laughs> from turning right to left like a tennis match, but she was a phenomenal talent and an alum from Minnesota and Kobe Bryant, the late great Kobe Bryant tweeted out about that performance and that is her current screensaver on her phone, a picture of both of them together. And she stayed a part of that Mamba family yes. throughout her career, just wrapping up her eighth season with the Minnesota Lynx right here where she's from. And Cheryl Reeve was at the practice earlier today, the shooting practices for both teams. And you know, I love that continuity between college basketball and the WNBA. And then there's so many little girls in the building and little boys too who aspire to be pros. Arnold kicks it out. Ice Brady this time. The mid-range has been working well for her. Just a nice touch again in that mid-range for Ice. I mean, she is just so good with finding areas to attack. Well, here's great ball movement, superb spacing, and then just step into the sight line. Great pass, and then AZ Fudd, who is not active on the floor, but she's active as a teammate, applauding great activity by her teammates. And this is an 8 nothing run. Minnesota in a significant slump right now. They're shooting just 21%. It's catching up to them right now. They were able to keep it a one possession game at the half. Still not shooting well. And now it's slowing down. Yep. And the turnovers piling up here in the second half, too. Nice job there by Ashlyn Shade to close the painted area and get gaps. And that's the verbiage that we heard all practice long earlier today from UConn. Close gaps and rotate. Arnold trying to take Graholski one-on-one. -on -one. 
And a traveling violation. And a good job there by Minnesota to close the gap right there at the basket. Luke splits away, applauding that defensive effort from her team, but they just haven't been able to come down here and pay that effort off. Down by 10, their largest deficit, and Arnold is whistled for the foul guarding the ball. You see Minnesota there, they were set up in their horn set. Some people call it a double drag or an Iverson action they were trying to get into with the two post players at the elbows and then two shooters in the corner to space the floor. That's two on Arnold. Here it is right here. They're trying to run it again. Use the screen and then they like to split off and try to isolate down inside. Mara Braun has been quiet in the second half, but she will launch from long range and has just not been there today. One for 15 from the floor. And sometimes when it hasn't been falling for you, I saw a little bit of body language after that last one didn't touch the rim. Again, you have to have amnesia. If you're a scorer, right, not just a shooter. Everybody can shoot it, right? If you're a scorer, you can't think about the misses. You have to think of next play. It's the next shot that's going to go in. You can't drop your head and feel sorry for yourself. You have another opportunity coming soon. Newell, wide open. And the first three of the game for UConn. And that's an amazing stat. 11-0 run now by the Huskies. We said we felt the momentum picking up for them to take control of the game. And they're pulling away right here and yet another stop. That is three turnovers in the second half after having five in the first. Well, that's what you want to get. You want to get consecutive stops and scores. We used to, when I was coaching, we ran a shell drill. You get four consecutive stops, four scores, but the scores have to be in the paint. So everybody's being challenged. Ice Brady, she is feeling good. Teammates are cheering her on. And UConn continuing to pull away because of their ability to get the necessary stops, steals, and boards. Braun being guarded by the two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. She crashes and will be shooting two. Well, here's UConn, great spacing here. And then the lefty, ooh, looking like loving basketball with the emphasis on the follow-through. Teammates loving it. The applause coming from the fans who are here for the Huskies. And again, over 100 people in the building celebrating the return home for Paige Beckers, who lived just 10 minutes away from here. You're a native here. How, how close is that actually? Well, it's about 25 minutes or so. Her mom watching on. Right her entire there. family there. You see Bob Beckers, her little brother, Drew, staying engaged, watching as well. Yeah, Bob had that white hat on there, and, and he'd love to see that continued support. There's the fam. Everybody's in the building. He's got snacks. I need to know what that is. What is that? <laughs> is it a ring pop or something? Push pop? Push pop? I don't know. It's blue. That's, <laughs> he's enjoying the game. See it. His sister's team pull away. Mule, the mid range, not there. Minnesota being outscored here in the third, 15 to 4. With another offensive possession, there is Braun flipping it up and in second bucket today. Yeah, those outside shots haven't been falling, but Braun with the nifty footwork got that one to drop in the lane. Leah Edwards trying to direct some traffic. She wanted the ball at the top of the paint to get that lob inside with how she was being sealed off. Minnesota just 2 of 11 in this quarter so far, but this is one of the buckets here. Stop on a dime, put the brakes on, and then come on back through with the long stride and the drop in. Mara Braun playing USA 3x3 last season as Edwards sticks with it for the easy two. Persistence paying off on the interior for Connecticut. Nobody checked Edwards off and boxed her out. Gave her another opportunity. So Minnesota's trying to get into spacing wise. It looks like a five out. Braun, a difficult shot, and then ripped down by Edwards. That's a tough shot. That's a tough shot, and they've been doing well when they're getting some screening action on and off the ball. K.K. Arnold, if you blinked, you wouldn't have yeah. seen her fly up the floor. Hey, listen, 
She plays with so much fire and intensity. She's ferocious with it, and you love to see young players have that level of confidence, but it's the work ethic that pays that forward, right? You're not going to be confident if you don't put the work in. And she has put the work in indeed for the Huskies. This year's preseason Big East Freshman of the Year. Coach Oriema says she's not shy, someone who just is not worried. She will just make plays, and you can see the poise that she has doesn't say freshman. No, she plays with a high motor. And when players have high motors, you just put them, you just wind them up and set them on the floor, <laughs> let them go to work. And, and that's what Gino Ariama and his staff, that's what they've been able to do out of the gates this season with Arnold. Minnesota hoping for a solid shot here. But things went off the rails in the third quarter. It was yeah. just a one possession ball game at the half. Battle has it stolen. Arnold looking up at the clock. Wow! That is not a freshman play. UConn increasing its lead in the third. Looking great doing it. Well, this is what it's been all about in the second half so far for UConn. Clock running down. KK Arnold says, let me get this shot off and in. Holding up that hand for emphasis. That's a floater from range, people. <laughs> Our teammates loving it. You couldn't script this. The freshman KK Arnold getting the steal, eyes up, looking at the clock. That's a runner from three. Ah, it goes go. to end the third quarter. Let's go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Feet behind the line, the officials came over to us and said that was a three ball. That counts for three. Paige, giving love to the young buck. The freshman class has been phenomenal for the Huskies. You look at this group, we know that freshmen that come into this program, they are the most highly touted, highly touted recruits in the entire country. And they are playing above their grade. Oh, flat out solid performances and no fear in these youngsters. They're coming out here to show what they've got. And that one by Arnold was a lot. She's got a lot, okay. And we've got two freshmen on the floor right now in Ashlyn Shade and Caden Samuels as well. And Q Samuels, she's rocking rough and tough with the Afro Plus right there. Number four, Gino Ariema recruited me back in the day, and he said, hey, that's a mini you out there. And she does about two of the ten things basketball players need to do. And I was like, oh, well, I don't know if I like that anymore. <laughs> but he said she, she can shoot the leather off the ball, and she's fearless. And so I said, okay. See, there she is. Okay, mini me. I see it. I see it now, hey, Christy. Let's go, mini me. <laughs> I was like, we don't need the other eight things that, you know, we got minuses on. So we'll take the two out of ten. We'll take those. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota looking to respond, Tristy, from a quarter in which they were outscored 21 to 6, down by just three at the half, but they're down to shooting 22%. It has not drifted from that, but Braun. She can make those kinds of shots. Yeah, you can almost see the relief on her face after that shot went down for her because she has been off the mark in this game here at home for the Gophers. The third bucket today is Edwards gets that downhill speed. Not much you can do at her size coming downhill. Full steam ahead. Tough to stop it. Timeout called by Minnesota, grown to a 20-point lead for UConn. Well, look at my mini-me getting the work done. Gino Arima said it, not me. Look at the persistence and resilience on the interior. Q Samuels, you better go. UConn dialing into its defense here at Minnesota. It was that NC State loss, 92 points being the most they've allowed in regulation in 22 years. They really lit a fire for this team to establish defense as their identity, and for back-to-back -back games, they've absolutely delivered. Yeah, and that's the carryover. That's what Paige Beckers told us after practice today. That's what Gino Ariema 
stated as well to us after practice today. He said, we have to carry that kind of effort and energy over on the defensive side. We have to have good gap help. Help side rotation needs to be there and look to trap and force tough shots. Mallory Heyer launches the three. And Aaliyah Edwards has really picked things up in this third quarter. Look at the big. She was out there near the half court line as UConn <laughs> continues to drain. Yeah. And Paige Beckers is on the bench just cheering her teammates on because they have been effectively impacting the game. Raholski has been a bright spot for Minnesota shooting. She's made more baskets than anyone. She has. From the beginning, he knew she was ready to shoot it. She missed her first handful of shots, but didn't let that stop her. First gopher into double figures. 11 points for her as it's been a slow go on the offensive end. Griffin forces it up and a rebound to Raholski. Griffin started in place of AZ Fudd. Coming off of a game where she had 13 rebounds and four blocks, so her activity has been fantastic. But here's the push with a pass up the floor, and there's Q Samuels on Q, knocking that one in all net. Paige said, how'd you do it? Gooseneck, follow it through, and snap the wrist. Paige talked about how much confidence that Q has. She said, I don't think a lot of things shake her, and we're seeing that here on the floor. That's why Gino said that we're <laughs> <laughs> the mini Christie. Oh, see, if she, oh, okay. If I just say if she makes that one too. I don't know how Christy that leaving. was, though. No, no, that's, that's all cue on that one. <laughs> Edwards into the passing lane and off to the races is Griffin charging down Braun, but it will be a block. Well, that's a hard hit. Blitz away. Incredulously shakes her head. Let's take a look. You see Braun trying to get established, but she doesn't quite get there. Oh, she didn't like it. Not happy with that call. Super close. Like, you have to be fully established and square with the ball handle. And I thought her left shoulder wasn't all the way turned to face Griffin on that drive. She hustled to get back, but it does take that kind of pre precision to yes. cut it off. Yeah, you got to get beyond the ball and then face. Samuels battling for it, but taken by Braun. Still plenty of time for Minnesota to get things going, but they've got to go with quick score opportunities here in the quarter court. Like that. Like that. Braun has found her touch from range, that's her second three in this quarter. And if she gets hot now, she can become unconscious and just let it fly and not think about the missed shots. Like I said, think about the next shots. Braun up to 12 and a whistle called. Going for that loose ball will go against UConn. Paige Beckers checking back in for the Huskies. Paige Beckers had over 500 days prior to the season beginning where she was not an active player for this team. And she said it gave her so much perspective and she's been so much more hungry out here on the court and playing with. She already played with joy and energy, but it's times a thousand now in that absence that she had to face. She said it was actually this game that gave her something to look forward to, to work toward in her rehab, that little bit of spark and energy to yep. get back on the floor here in Minneapolis in our hometown. That's all you have to do to challenge a competitor. Give him some incentive. Five to shoot for Samuels. Beautiful pump fake, but she's not able to land the jump shot. Nice idea there, pulling up at the nail, but she could have done that pump fake and drifted those long limbs right to the cup. Nearing the midway point of the fourth quarter. A lot of work ahead for Minnesota. It was down by just three at the half. Broad knows they have to work fast. That time that three doesn't fall. And that one was a deep try from three. In that deep water area, at least two feet behind the line. But you can't be that desperate, right? You have to make sure you work the defense. You can still work the defense and get a good quick shot. That's a better look, maybe toes to the three-point line instead of two feet behind the line. And maybe also getting 
to the free throw line as well. We're stopping that clock. Absolutely. She got to get to the rack to do that. Edwards, full steam ahead. And no rotation available up the line. Like if you're that weak side defense from Minnesota, you have to be right there on the basket line. If you were to take a marker and go from underneath the hoop and draw it to the nail, that's right there in the middle of the foul line, that's where you need to be for help side to be ready. And no one was there. Hart wants it against Edwards. And she drains it right in the middle of the paint. Yeah, nice touch there on the turnaround fader. Over the outstretched arms of Edwards, who is a staunch shot blocker. And Minnesota forgot about Nika Mule. She's not just defense. Yeah, can't do that. Nika Mule staying aggressive, and that's what Paige Becker said. We all need to pick up the slack, right? We all need to stay aggressive and take a couple of more shots each to make up for the shots that AZ Fudd would normally be taking. Into the hands of Braun. Can't land that three. Hart battling on the offensive glass. And she will head to the free throw line. Ah, she's a toughie right in there. And she's talking to her teammates like, let's go. We got to dig in right here and fight for possessions. And you can see her being a tremendous leader right now in the huddle. She's talking to him. That's how you do it. She's the only player on this team as Edwards picks up her third who has NCAA tournament experience when she was with NC State transferred after first semester last season. But that is significant experience to have when you've been in the big dance coming to this fresh new program. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, it makes a difference when you have felt what an NCAA tournament feels like and knowing what it takes to not only be in it, but to prepare to be in it. And that's why her leadership qualities in that huddle right before she's taking these free throws. That's big time. That's impactful. Just as much as her gaudy stat line and her double figure scoring, that verbiage of leadership carries a long way. And not just for this game. Four to play here at the barn. And Gino Oriema will call a timeout. His team up by 18 at this point after they turned a switch in the third quarter. And Christy, I think it was keyed by Aaliyah Edwards. She's got 16 points right now, 8 of 15 shooting, 7 rebounds, but doing the work she's supposed to do and execute it. Well, Aaliyah Edwards has been spectacular in this game today, returning third-team All-American preseason All-Big East. She's on the Wade watch list, the Naismith watch list, and the Katrina McLean watch list as well. 22 points per game coming into this one, and she's just been very consistent on both ends of the floor, and they're going to need that presence inside because what UConn has is a lot of depth on the perimeter, but what they don't have is a lot of depth on the interior. So with her ability to stay consistent with what she brings to the floor is much needed, and they need to have her stay aggressive with her offense as well. Drives and kicks and drives and finishes. And she was aided so much last year by Dorky Uhas. Now playing here in yes, Minnesota, yes. had a fantastic freshman season. Freshman. Rookie season <laughs> under thing. Cheryl Reeve. Same yes. thing. Let's say UConn basketball, 10 on the shot clock. But that makes a difference when you have different players around you and you know schematically you want to come out and do the same kinds of things but it's different when the personnel changes and that's a UConn team still finding its footing this season as Paige can't get that three to fall but if you're a work in progress and having wins like this yeah. things are in good shape great box out by Edwards but kept in by Groholski she finds higher for two yeah, nice hard cut on the weak side. The ball will find you if you take hard slice cuts like that to the rim. Ice Brady, someone who could be fulfilling that role in the front court as we were talking about. Her first full season after missing her freshman year. Great seal, but we'll go back to Minnesota. A nice closeout on the weak side by Battle who came over to get a deflection and tap it out of bounds off the body. There's that high ball screen again, and then watch UConn, they hard hedge it and recover. 
Battle able to get to her spot at the high post. Kicks out to Graholski, trying to use her power under the rim. Braun into higher. She faces up. And Edwards will take that, adding to her rebound count. That's eight. Solid, solid performance by Edwards. And those possessions, right, where in that first half, Minnesota had the possession battle won. And now it feels like UConn has maximized that because of the effort, like Edwards just had on the glass. KK Arnold from the corner misses everything. And there is Edwards once more. She's pushed. To have this kind of performance, too, because we don't know what the timeline is for AZ Flood that's still to be determined. Right. But to have this kind of performance without, as Paige put it, the gravity that she brings to the game. Yeah, no question. I mean, it changes things. We were just talking about how the dynamics change with Dorka Juhas graduating and everything. But AZ Flood, I mean, she came out of the gates, had 18 points in one of their preseason games. And just the player you have to honor whether she has the ball or not on the offensive end because she's a floor spacer. You have to respect her abilities. She has some Minnesota connections as well. Yes. Her family with a cabin here in the States. Frequent place they go to relax and recreate on the lake. Yeah. Yes, so my daughter played with AZ Fudd on the same AAU team. And there's the family. You see the, the merch for AZ Fudd. That's her grandma standing up with the glasses on. And that's her mom there, Katie. And her dad sitting down right there, Tim Fudd. Where they run the GTS Fusion. Paige Becker's taking a seat on the bench, feeling that appreciation from the crowd that loves women's basketball in this city. We look at just the Big Ten tournament last year here in Minneapolis, setting an attendance record. The crowd at Minnesota Lynx games, this is a special one for both that player and for this community. No question about it. I mean, it's all tied in. I mean, you see the little elementary school age kids here just in awe, not even blinking, looking at these players play hard and smart. And then you see a Paige Beckers and an Easy Fudd going to these links and, and Mystics games and, and seeing the WNBA players and in all of them wanting to aspire to be that as well. And of course, wearing a Dorka Juhas jersey go. for her close friend. Ha. She even offered to Dorka Anytime you want a home-cooked meal, oh. she took him on the boat, giving it. her the whole Minnesota experience. But you're right, that connection to the WNBA is so important for these players who want to go to that next level. No question. It's, it's right there. It's a tangible goal to reach when you see your teammates, you know the work that's necessary to get to the next level. It has Betancourt, Amari DeBerry, new into the game for UConn as they look to tie a bow on a very strong second half. They shot well throughout, but just weren't quite clicking to get that separation. That happened in the third. The fast break points, the 13 to three advantage by UConn. And they were able to do that by getting the steals and the scores in this game. Starters coming out for Minnesota, including multiple Minnesota natives in heart, hire, and battle who were so pumped up for this matchup as well. KK Arnold pushing off, and she is whistled with 45 to play. Well, you still want to maintain your focus and execution. It doesn't matter the time on the clock, right? You still want to come out and do your job and do it well. It's like a timeout call by Minnesota here with 30 seconds left. Trailing by 18. And Paige Beckers gets to go back to stores. Feeling pretty good about this one since she was looking so much forward to it. Had at least 100 family and friends in the stands. Plus, getting a really solid win under their belts as a team. Yeah, and I think if you put all of those things on the list, which one would she circle as being the most important? The dub, right? They, she wanted to come here and play and compete in front of her family and friends, former high school teammates, 
at all, okay? But she wanted to win. She wanted the team to win. You see her mom there with the Yukon Huskies with the red on it there. And it's just been really fun to, to watch her get back to it, get back on the floor because she's been so hungry. Caden Samuels with the rebound. And UConn can finish this off and improve to three and one this season. That one blemish after they started number two in the country to NC State. And now stringing together some wins against ranked Maryland. And then against this Minnesota team looking to prove to the Big Ten it is up and coming. That's a tough bucket inside by Sanders. That is the final 62 to 44 is the UConn victory. They outscored Minnesota 21 to six in the third quarter. That was the complete difference maker. Shot around 44% for the entire game, but another precise and well executed defensive game plan holding Minnesota to 26% shooting, including six of 34 from three. So Paige Beckers scoring 12 points in this one, eight rebounds, four assists as well, continues her remarkable comeback season. She's really lost the better of the last two years, but her start to the season has been outstanding. And you can see why head coach Gina Oriema said to start this season, Paige is a better basketball player now than when she was the National Player of the Year, the first freshman to win the Naismith AP and Wooden Player of the Year awards. And it is off to a great start, which is great not just for UConn, but for women's basketball, period, to be able to see her back out onto the court. UConn today. Also keyed by Aaliyah Edwards, the senior, the returning leading scorer. 16 points for her on 8 of 15 shooting. Pulled down nine rebounds. Was all around outstanding in this one. In this 62 to 44 victory for the Yukon Huskies. Christy Winter Scott standing by with the Minnesota native Paige Beckers. We're here with Paige Beckers, the welcome home. You had this game circled on your calendar for many days. What did it feel like not only to play in this game, but to get in and win it? It felt great. I mean, obviously the atmosphere was amazing. The environment is amazing. Um, just for me to sort of embrace that and just enjoy the moment, especially coming off a year where I, haven't, I wasn't even able to play basketball. It was just a great environment and a great atmosphere, and I'm glad we came out with the win. We had Amaya on the other side, someone you're very familiar with. What is it like to take on a best friend and former high school teammate like that in this environment? Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it takes me back to my high school days of us at Hopkins Open Gyms and Hopkins practices just competing against each other. Um, but it was really cool just for us to be in this environment together and, and have that enjoy that moment. In the first game of the season, you gave up 92 points at NC State, but in the last couple of games, the defense has been staunch. What has been the difference on that side of the floor for you? I think just our mentality. Um, we know that we want defense to dictate how much and how well we win. Um, obviously, today was a really ugly game um, on, on offense, but our defense picked us up and it helped us win. And lastly, what is it like to see these little girls waiting to just say hi to you here? And how has that afforded you the energy and the effort and the fire to continue to compete? Yeah, that's why you play basketball. So I was once those little kids um, just admiring my role models and looking up to a lot of other people just wanting to fill their shoes. So for me to be that for a lot of younger girls, it's why you play and it really inspires you to be great. Fantastic. Thank you, Paige. The final score here at Williams Arena as a crowd surrounds Paige Beckers just off this raised floor to get a look at someone who has already etched herself into Minnesota basketball lore. She leaves the court victorious, 62 to 44 here in her homecoming.
scoring 12 points. You heard from our interview with Christy Winter Scott how important this moment was for her, both with those personal connections, her former high school teammate in Amaya Battle, a warm embrace as she got things started off early for UConn, a three point play over three white jerseys and of course the consummate teammate pumping up the rest of the huskies from the bench it was an all-around effort by page and the huskies and something for this crowd to enjoy and remember we're sending to studio more basketball coming your way at the top of the hour